how much is a DevOps engineer worth in 2025? If you're here, you probably already know that DevOps jobs are both incredibly high paying and in demand, but how high are we talking? Well, you're about to find out. Maybe you're already in DevOps and you're wondering how to take your salary to the next level fast. Today, I'll show you exactly how to climb the salary ladder and share the key strategies you need to hit that six figure mark. By the way, throughout the video, I'll be dropping some bonus tips that help me position myself for the highest pay possible throughout my career. Don't miss out. I'm Michael from CodeCloud, and let's jump right in. Let's go from the bottom to the top. First up, freshers. Ah, the joy of being new. You've seen those funny memes about needing experience to get experience, right? Sadly, those two years required job posts are everywhere these days. But don't worry, I'll tell you exactly how to bypass those tricky job descriptions when you're just getting started. So first, let's talk numbers as a DevOps fresher, as a beginner to DevOps. Your starting salary in 2025 could range from about $60,000 to $85,000 USD a year. Not bad for your first step into DevOps, right? Now, most companies are gonna look for a bachelor's degree in computer science or a related field, but here's the secret they value practical experience even more. So what should you do if you don't have a computer science degree or the relevant experience? I've got three tips for you. Number one, build a killer portfolio. Start creating some personal projects. There's lots out there that show your skills in say, for example, CI CD pipelines, infrastructure automation tools, and cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, Google, et cetera. So portfolio. Number two, master the basics. Get really comfortable with Linux, shell scripting, programming languages like Python, and you know version control systems like Git. You are gonna be managing repos, so probably be a good idea. Number three, get certified. Even if it's a basic certification leading up to like an associate's level certification, at one point I was collecting certifications like trophies. And while they aren't always mandatory, they definitely signal and scream, I'm serious. Now here are the three I recommend. In order, I would definitely would get like the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner or maybe AZ900, which is the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals, and then also maybe the Docker Certified Associates. From there, I would grab at least one associate's degree, one next level degree that's relevant for your role. P.S. by the way, you can find all the three that I just mentioned at CodeCloud. Now let's move on to those with experience under your belt. So intermediate engineers, these are people with two to five years of experience. If you've been in the DevOps game for two to five years, you've got some hands-on experience. So how much can you make at this stage? With about two to five years of experience, you're looking at an annual salary from about 90,000 to 140,000 USD. That's a solid leap from the fresher beginning salary that you started with, and it reflects your growing value. So it's not just your practical experience, but also your problem solving skills, your communication, your orchestration skills. But how do you make sure that you're hitting that high end of that proper range? One, specialize in whatever tools you need to, to drive automation. Companies are constantly searching for DevOps engineers who can automate complex processes and therefore improve efficiency and reduce manual errors. So focusing on mastering tools like any of the CI CD platforms like Jenkins, for example, or Ansible, which is a configuration management tool, or Terraform, which is really good for infrastructure provisioning, particularly in cloud. Number two, develop your leadership, your communication, your soft skills. At this level, companies expect you to take on more of the non-engineering responsibility. This is about leading projects and it, you might even be mentoring junior engineers. If you can show your leadership potential, including things like communication, project management, your value is gonna skyrocket. Number three, advanced certifications. So you might have some of the basic certifications that we just mentioned, including some of the associate certifications, but this is the time to get serious and level up. So here I would suggest getting certifications like the AWS Solutions Architect or the Certified Kubernetes Administrator. You might get them as a junior, but you would need at least one or more of these certifications at an intermediate level. These are gonna confirm and demonstrate your expertise in things like cloud infrastructure or container orchestration, which is expected of an intermediate engineer. Okay. So what about the senior engineers? What about the ones with five to 10 years experience? If you've been in DevOps for five to 10 years, you're no longer just a cog in the machine. You're basically leading the charge. As a senior DevOps engineer, you can expect to make anywhere between 130,000 to 190,000 USD per year. 
and that's just the base salary. Many senior engineers also receive things like equity, stock options, bonuses, and other perks that can significantly increase their total compensation, oddly enough, particularly outside the US. But then how do you ensure that you stay competitive and that you can command the highest salary? Here's a few ideas. Number one, say yes and own large scale projects, lead them. So at this stage, you should be someone who stands out, who leads the DevOps initiatives for large teams, and you should be working on enterprise level infrastructure and some of the more complex orchestration. This could include migrating entire infrastructures to the cloud or implementing sophisticated DevSecOps CDI CD pipelines across multiple departments, across multiple environments. Number two, master cloud architecture and cloud implementation. So cloud computing is at this point should be a afterthought, meaning you're already strong in this. It's no longer optional. It's necessary. Certifications like the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Professional or any of the specialty exams, whether they're in Azure, Google or AWS, they're going to help you stand out. Number three, share your knowledge. At this level, you're not just an engineer. Ideally, you have some opinions and some thoughts based on your experience. You're a thought leader. You want to be contributing to blogs. You want to be speaking at DevOps conferences. You want to write on LinkedIn. You want to post your thoughts and showcase your techniques. It'll increase your value. Now, what if you're beyond senior engineer? So for those of you aiming for the top of the ladder, positions like DevOps director, VP of engineering, even chief technology officer, these are where things get really exciting because you're moving out of tactical implementation and you're now more into strategy. At these levels, salaries start from about 150,000 USD and can go well beyond the $300,000 per year mark. But you're not just an engineer anymore. You're driving strategy, you're managing large teams, you are connecting with the industry, you are shaping the entire technology roadmap for your company. And here's what you need to focus on if you're operating at that level. One, your business to technical acumen it needs to be incredibly strong. As a leader, it's really no longer about tech. You've got to understand the business side of things, budgets, return on investment, and basically aligning or groups of teams, not just teams, but teams of teams, aligning them with DevOps practices and aligning them with the broader business goals, making sure that their technical outcomes are aligned with the business. Number two, networking and thought leadership. So if that was kind of optional for a senior engineer at this level, your connections that you make, your network is your net worth and your ability to signal that, showcase leadership, attending conferences, participating in panels, writing thoughtful and meaningful pieces on trends in DevOps and technologies that you've done and strategies that you approached, this is gonna open up the opportunity for even higher and bigger roles like CTO. Number three, don't stop learning. This is probably true for all of the levels, but particularly here, when you reach above a senior level and you're leading people, you're moving a little bit less out of the day-to-day -day around engineering. And so it's kind of easy to believe that you know everything. And that's very risky considering how fast technology evolves, new tools, new ways of managing people, new ways of managing projects, new cloud platforms, new emerging trends like AI, machine learning, data science, platform engineering. You gotta be kind of a little bit aware and on top of everything, particularly from an industry perspective. So there you have it, the salary breakdown for DevOps engineers going from beginner to intermediate to senior engineer to moving into the leadership space. So whether you're just starting out or whether you are aiming for that CTO role, the opportunities are endless. The key is to keep growing, keep learning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what is possible. Let me know in the comments, what's your salary goal for 2025? And as always, if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, check out codecloud.com to build the DevOps skills that you need and the certifications you need to help you level up and get paid. Until next time.